Hey, you all have been asking me how to easily create a drywall transition from drywall to wood or just about anything. I have that solution. Let's jump right into it. Okay, this right here is your key. This is what it takes to make a beautiful transition. And what this is, this here is a piece of zip bead or they call it tearaway bead. So what you've got here is you've got a long wide side and a skinny side. The wide side goes between your sheetrock and your transition. So when you've got a, a transition from sheetrock to wood, you take this piece and you slide it right in here. So you can make this up against wood or center block or brick. It doesn't matter. It gives you this nice clean look. And then after you mud everything, your two coats or three coats, then you take this little edge and you peel it right off just like this. It comes right up. That's why they call it tearaway bead. And this is your nice clean look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go off and we're going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure how long this piece needs to be. And it is 50 and 9 sixteenths. Okay, so now we're down here on the zip bead measuring. 50 and 9 sixteenths. Right there. And the snips that I'm using to cut the bead is just a yellow handle pair. The yellow means that they're straight. Different colors means could cut to the right or to the left. So there's a red handle and a blue handle. And the yellow are straight. So this is what you want to get is the yellow handles. Then I'll cut the back. Then I'll cut the front. And that cuts it right in half like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the zip bead that I've cut and we're going to lay it right up inside here like this. Make sure it all goes. Make sure it's a clean path, which it is. There's nothing blocking us. And then we're going to start stapling this bead on, which is like this. Well, I usually do between two and three, three inches a staple. And the whole time I'm putting pressure this way up against the wood, or in this case, the tape. You may be asking why I'm stapling this and not gluing it like I have done in one of my previous videos, drywall return windows. The reason is because this job is very high end. This is up against rough cedar. And if I get glue on it, it would be very difficult to get off. You may encounter where the sheetrock is up against something too tight and your zip bead won't fit. So you have to get in there with a sharp knife or not unless you might have a very sharp personality and maybe that might cut it, you never know. When you are fitting two pieces of zip bead together, the better the fit, the better the finish. When you have everything good and stapled down very tight, then you can go ahead and start mudding. But let me first talk about a few more little transitions on this job. Here is a metal bead that butts up against my zip bead. And then here is also where two 90 degree angles, an inside and an outside. Okay, so what I have here is I've got some quick set mud that we're gonna go off and mud this with, or otherwise known as hot mud. You've got a lip on this, is what you want to make sure that your knife is up against and on top of. So here, you want your knife to be on that lip that's right there and muddy. Show you a little closer up. You clean your edge, feather it, however you want to call it. I used to do it, I do it like twice. And then just keep your knife up against that plastic edge. And then if you got a little bit of a build up, pull it again. With very light pressure. One more swipe just to make sure we get it all pretty. You get like these little hitchhikers, you're gonna have to pull it again. 
This was a very long piece of zip bead. I wound up doing it in sections. I highly recommend that. You will run into lap marks, which is fine. I'll show you how I deal with lap marks between coats. You'll see in just a moment. Also remember to keep your knife right up against the tearaway strip and on top of your bead so you have a nice full bed coat on your zip bead. So there you go on the bed coat. So we've got this here. This is the first coat of mud. I did it with a six inch knife, which this is a six inch knife right here. Um, you can start off with a six inch knife or on your first coat, or you could do an eight inch knife. But this is an eight right here. This is what I'm gonna go ahead and skim a zip bead with, with my eight inch knife. I got a little lap mark here I'm gonna scrape off. Like I said, I scrape my lap marks and I don't sand between my coats. Ugh, oh, it's like pigeons. Okay, so here on the skim coat, what you're doing is exactly the same thing as your bed coat, but with a wider knife. What that does is it creates an illusion of it not being so steep of an angle into that bead. So when it's painted, it looks like a complete smooth transition from sheetrock to wood or anything at all. Get you a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. You see I'm mudding right up against that lip, nice and tight. Cutting my edge or feathering it. Feathering it again with my eight. Wiping it nice and clean. Piece of trash. That's your skim coat. Um, tight, mudded tight up against this bead right here, against this lip. This is the tearaway part that comes off, and this is up against your transition. So this is a perfect, will be a beautiful transition from sheetrock to wood that's up underneath here. And you can put tape up here to protect from painting or also from the mud. And after you tear away the bead, then just take your razor knife and cut the tape and peel it right off. Wait, not yet. You still have some sanding to do. It has to be carefully sanded down until the lip of the zip bead starts to reveal itself. This will make perfect sense once you see it at the very end. Of course, you've got to sand both sides of the bead. You've got to sand the outside and then up against the tear away lip also, nice and thoroughly and smooth. Once this is done and it's very smooth and flawless and you can see that little reveal of the lip, then you can remove the lip of the tearaway bead. I am very excited to see what the end result may look like. Okay, so what I've done here is I've went off and sanded the zip bead before I pulled off the tab. And the reason for that is so when I do pull off the tab, it doesn't go off and chip my drywall mud. And uh, let's do a piece here and see how it does. I usually use my knife to get started just a little bit. Lift it up. And so you always pull towards your mud so it cleans it as you pull. That's why you sand it first. You can see the mud falling. Okay, so we've went off and we've pulled the tab off, the zip bead, and now we're gonna go ahead and cut the blue tape, and so then we can take a look and see how beautiful the transition looks. Yep. 
I think it looks uh, really nice. I think this is. As you can see, you've got now you've got this really nice edge here that's just really beautiful. So we're all done here. And uh, hopefully this answered the question on uh, a transition from sheetrock to pretty much anything, how a zip bead works. And if this helped you out and you think it might could help anybody else out, please hit the like button. I hope to see you next week on the Drywall Guy, the DIY. Thank you.